Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and here we are looking at two lessons in Chapter 3 describing and classifying matter, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, we're talking about physical science, and science, of course, is anything dealing with the natural universe, and physical science talks about the two branches of chemistry and physics. So we're going into one part, chemistry. This is the first half of what we'll do this school year. Now, in science, remember that matter is anything that has mass or takes up space. So pretty much anything in the physical universe is matter. Everything around you is matter. Everything. You're matter. I'm matter. Uh, the television uh, or computer you're watching this on, or even the phone is made of matter. The air that you're breathing is matter. The paper, so on and so forth. You understand what I'm talking about. Now, two common things your textbook talks about are air and paper. Now, air and paper are both in the physical universe. Therefore, both consist of matter. However, air and paper, as you can probably guess, are both made of different materials and have different uses. After all, you can't breathe paper and you can't write on air. Fair enough. It's because they're made of different materials and have different uses. Now, we can tell the difference between these materials based on their properties or characteristics. And we use these properties or characteristics in order to classify them. And the study of matter and how matter changes and the ways we classify and all this stuff is what we call chemistry. Later this year, we'll talk about physics. Okay, so chemistry, what we'll be talking about is how matter changes and the properties of matter themselves. Uh, and whenever we look at matter, we can break matter down to a certain point. And oftentimes in uh, chemistry, we'll talk about substances. And the definition of a substance is this. A substance is a single type of matter that is pure. In other words, it always has a specific makeup. No matter where we see it, it's still what it is. That's a substance. So for example, let's look at this. This is a geyser. As you don't know, a geyser is a vent of hot water that shoots hot water out uh, based on heating in the earth. And this is Castle Geyser, if I'm not mistaken, near Yellowstone Park uh, in Wyoming. And what we have right here is a glacier. This is the Patagonia Glacier in Argentina and South America. As you can see, both are very different. But at the same time, they're made of the same substance. Care to guess what substance it is? If you said water, you're correct. And yes, I was waiting for you to say that. So let's look at this Venn diagram. On the right, we see geysers. On the left, we see glaciers. And as you can see, they're both very different. Glaciers, for example, are made of solid matter. It's made of ice. Geysers are made of superheated water, liquid matter, that even goes turns into a gas once, it, it, once it's hot enough. Okay? The glacier obviously has cold temperature. Geyser, hot temperature. Whenever the glacier reaches the end, as you can see, it breaks off into pieces. The geyser, on the other hand, shoots out of the vent and just flies all over the place. It can flow freely. Okay, so you can see, as you can see, a glacier and a geyser are both very different things. But no matter what, both of them are the same substance. They're both water, and so you can always find water in whether a solid, a liquid, or gas. And a lot of times, when we use the describe matter in our class, we're going to talk about water because we can understand it as a solid, as ice; liquid, as liquid water; gas, as water vapor. So this is the first example of many we'll use with water. But another good example of a substance is salt. Where we live by the Gulf of Mexico, we know salt, and we have salt mines in our area. Now, you can find salt in the salt shaker uh, at your kitchen table. Or you could find it in seawater, because you can taste the salt in the salt water when you go to the beach and take a drink of the ocean. Or if you go down into a salt mine, you can go down there, and no matter where you see it, you have salt. It's the same composition and has the same properties. It's one atom of sodium, one, so one atom of chlorine all the time. Now, matter is described by its properties. It, the way the matter looks and stuff, uh, the way it interacts is how we classify matter. And the properties we use to describe matter are, there's two types, there's two main types. And you might remember this. One type is a physical property, and the other is a chemical property. Okay, so physical and chemical properties. These are very important. The first one is a physical property. And a physical property is a characteristic of a substance that can be observed without changing it into another substance. In other words, we can look at 
a physical property. We can look at it. We can observe it. We can use our five senses. We don't have to do any sort of chemistry experiment or anything with it because we can observe where it's at. And it doesn't do anything and it doesn't change it. However, when we do try to change the substance, that's when we see its chemical property or the characteristics of a substance that describes its ability to change into a different substance. So a good way of thinking about it is uh, water. Water is clear, it has no real taste to it. You can heat it up, it turns into water vapor. You can cool it down, it turns into ice. If I put water into electricity, I can break it down into individual hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And that is a chemical property, that it, it can conduct electricity and it can break it down. But a physical property is I can just look at it, I can observe it, I can use my five senses, but I don't have to do any sort of chemical reaction to it. So that's a difference between the two. And you might be asking yourself, Mr. Kine, I don't quite understand this. Well, I'm glad you're saying that because we're going to look right here. And let's let's step back, or if you will, let's zoom all the way into the atom. Okay, The atom okay, is a series of elements. Okay, Different types of atoms make different types of elements. And an element is a substance that cannot be broken down to any other substance by physical or chemical means. So we can't, we can't chop it up, we can't do anything to it apart from, and it's still that. Like for example, we can't melt gold down into anything else. It's still gold no matter what. We can't like zap it with electricity or hit it with radiation and it, it turn, changes into something else really. Anything else, it, it, it's still gold. It doesn't break down anything else. And scientists know that all matter in the universe is made up of more than 100 different elements. Okay, And each element itself can be identified by its physical or chemical properties. And later this year, we're going to talk about this. This is the periodic table. And these are all of the elements. Okay, And so if I look, this is carbon. Okay, it uses pencil lead and things like this, and we'll look at this later this year. But all of these things, is helium, argon, things like that, hydrogen, all of this stuff are different elements. And these are different substances. Like for example, titanium right here. We can't do anything to titanium to break it down anymore, because we can't. It's still titanium, no matter what we're doing with it. Okay. And each element can be identified by its physical or chemical properties. Now, of course, to review, uh, elements are can be broken down as small as they can go as an atom, and it's the smallest unit of matter. I know your textbook has a slightly different definition, but this is the one we're going to go with. Smallest unit of matter. Anything after that, it, it's not, not really matter. We have subatomic particles like protons and neutrons, which I'll talk about in a second. It's the basic particle from which all elements are made. Now, we can combine atoms, we can stick them together, and they form, a mo they form a chemical bond between each other. And we'll talk a little bit about chemical bonds later this year. But essentially, if two atoms are attracted to each other, or we can stick them together, a chemical bond forms. And when a chemical bond forms, we can form what we call a molecule. Okay, and a molecule is formed when two or more atoms combine to form larger particles. So let's look at this. If I want, I have hydrogen right here, and I put another hydrogen atom right here. This is a molecule, H2. Okay, This right here is an oxygen atom all by itself. Okay, So this is not a molecule because there's just one of them. Okay, But whenever I put together two hydrogen atoms, it becomes a molecule. But what happens whenever I take the oxygen molecule and I stick hydrogen, and I stick hydrogen, and it makes water. And I could put that right here, and that forms H2O or water. Now is that a molecule? Yes, it's two or more atoms bonded together. But that is something a bit different, or a different name for it, and we call that a compound. A compound is formed when two or more elements are chemically combined in a set ratio. And you should remember from your math class what a ratio is. Okay, and so let's go back to our let's go back to our molecule, and let's reset this and let's look at this. No matter what, no matter what, I stick 
no matter what water is, I'm going to have two hydrogen atoms right here and one oxygen atom, no matter what. Okay, as we can see in 3D, this is a water atom. Here's the two oxygen atoms, one hydrogen. And this is another way of looking at the bonds of hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so no matter what we do with water, it's in that set ratio, two hydrogen, one oxygen. Now, when elements chemically combined, they form compounds with properties that are different from the original elements. Okay, so if I go back to my hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen have very different properties of uh, than water. For example, hydrogen, you can set it on fire. Uh, it can combust and provide thrust. A oxygen is highly flammable. In fact, you need oxygen in order to have fire. But when we put them together, we make water. And guess what you can use to put out a fire? You can use water. It actually extinguishes it. So these are two very different things. Uh, so whenever we put them together to form a compound, they're very different in terms of their properties in physical and chemical. Okay, so let's just review right now, and I'm going to head back once again to my molecules. Okay, two elements together, okay, two atoms together forms a molecule. And the molecules can be the same atom or they can be different. So I can put this away and put this right here. Okay, H and O, that's a molecule because it's two different types of atoms, it's two or more, but when I put them together, I form a compound, and it's a set ratio of two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom. Okay? So that's what matter is made of. Now, one last section in this lesson are mixtures. Okay? Now, whenever we talk about molecules that's when they and compounds, that's when they bond together chemically. It's when they're stuck together through a chemical bond. But elements and compounds are substances. However, most materials oftentimes will find them and what we call a mixture. It's when two or more substances are together in the same place, but not chemically bonded. So they're just kind of sitting together. Okay? Now mixtures form compounds, uh, differ from compounds in that each substance keeps its own properties and the substances are not combined in a set ratio. In other words, we don't have always two to one. It can, it can vary in its ratio. You can have more of one and another or whatnot because they're not bonded together chemically. They're just physically together in the same place. And there are two types of mixtures. The first one is when the substances are together in a way that we can easily break apart. And that's what we call a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous means different. Okay? And so you can usually see the different parts and we can easily separate them. So for example, what we have right here is a salad. This is a heterogeneous mixture. You might ask, Mr. Klein, why are they? Why is it a heterogeneous mixture? Well, you can see the carrots and the grass and the peanuts and the radishes and I said beets and all of this stuff in here. We can see them, and if we wanted to, we could pick them out and we can separate all of the substances, all of the vegetables from that salad and put them in the different cups and it's different. There's no chemical bonding that goes on right here. They can e easily separate it. Salad's a great example. Good example, like I said, is salad or sand. Now, what happens if we mix them together so much that we really can't see the difference? Well, that's what we call a homogeneous mixture or, or if the same. Okay, it's where it's so evenly mixed you can't tell the different parts. And a good example of this is air or ketchup. Ketchup's made of vinegar, tomato paste, sugar, all sorts of things. I can take a scoop of ketchup out, and it would take some work, but I could eventually pull out the different parts. But right now, I can just take a scoop of ketchup, and I can't tell you which parts are vinegar, which parts are tomato paste. It's because they're mixed so evenly. Now, another name for a heterogeneous mixture is a solution, okay? And a solution is uh, the same thing, mixtures, okay? A uh, homogeneous mixture is a solution. Now, you can separate mixtures in many different ways, and I'm going to mention it, and we're not going to go into too much detail, but I just want to make you aware of them. You can separate them through what we call distillation. Distillation is whenever I boil something, and I can condense the separated parts. Like, I can take seawater, and I can boil seawater, and the water evaporates, and then I can, it can condense in another cup, and all I'm left with is a salt. We can do magnetic attraction. If something's magnetic, I can pull out the uh, magnetized pieces. I can filter it. 
through filtration. I could put a filter with salt water, and if I put a fine enough filter, the salts will be left over, the water will be separate. Or, it's simply through evaporation, which is what happens oftentimes if you take some seawater and you just pour it out and you just let it go and let all the water evaporate, what will be left over is the salt. So that's two lessons kind of combined together, describing matter and matter and its properties. So let's quickly review, because I know this video is getting a bit long. Matter is anything that has mass or takes up space. And matter has different properties. Uh, and the study of matter and its properties and how matter changes is chemistry. And we have two types of properties. One is its physical property, which we can just observe and look at quantitatively or qualitatively. The other types of properties are whenever we can do a chemical reaction to it, and that's what we call a chemical property, and we can see what happens. Because, and when we talk about substances, we're talking about things like water, whether it's a solid or a liquid, we know it's still water even though it has all these different properties because it's in different forms. And matter is made up of elements, which are substances, we can't break them down anymore. They stop being what it is. So like we can't break gold down and it not be gold anymore when we break down to the subatomic particles. And the atom is the smallest unit of matter. And we can stick atoms together in what we call chemical bonds to form molecules or compounds. So if you remember real quick, one last time we're going to look at is that if I combine two or more atoms together, we can form a molecule. If we combine two or more different elements, that makes a compound. And a compound is formed when two or more elements combine chemically in a set ratio. So we always know water has two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. And when they combine chemically, they have different properties. Like for example, water is necessary, I'm sorry, water, uh, oxygen is necessary for fire, because without it we can't have a fire, but water, even though it has oxygen, you can put a fire out. And that's whenever we combine elements and substances chemically. If we just combine them together physically, that's what we call a mixture, and there's two types. One is heterogeneous, where we can see the different parts, and that's like a salad. And the other one is called a solution or a homogeneous mixture, which is like ketchup, where we can't really separate the two, uh, unless we put it through four different types of ways of breaking apart mixtures. There's distillation, which involves boiling, filtration, magnetic attraction, and evaporation. So. There's the lesson. I know two lessons, it all in one, is kind of long, but don't worry, in class we're going to take several days and we're going to go into each of these pieces of it, but I wanted you to be aware of it and see how uh, matter, how we classify it, and then how we describe it. So there you go. If you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.